Welcome to another eddycurrent.com educational session. We're going to connect a lot of dots today, and I mean that literally. Today we're going to do a little vector point testing with my favorite bench top tester, the Nortec Workstation 2000, a very rare tester. Now, in this book, you can see a picture of Dr. Forrester's multi-test where he was sorting, I don't know, maybe ball bearings, some type of metal. And each time a measurement was made, it would put a dot up on the screen. And then he would use a statistical device called the Statimat to sort of track and trend all the ball bearings or whatever he was testing. So you may ask yourself, why don't we do it like this today? A Forester's dinner must have been pretty good, right? Well, <clears throat> vector point testing was one of the earliest forms of phase analysis because each one of those dots happened at a different location around the impedance plane. But it, it was a very primitive method of phase analysis. We'll call it the T-Rex of the eddy current world. Now, I could show you how to do a vector point on a current tester, but that would really be like stepping back in time because we have it much better off these days. The next thing I wanted to show you was a little picture out of Hugo Libby's book. See that down there? We got a vector diagram and we've got an unloaded coil position up here. And we've got a material right there and you've got uh, basically a conductivity curve there, but it only shows one material. All right. So now what I'm going to show you is a little vector diagram that I made right before we went live. So there's an impedance plane that I created earlier. You got the XL, looks like a two, but it's actually XL for inductive reactance. And then we've got resistance on the X axis. Resistance is the real component. Inductive reactance is the imaginary component. And then that diagonal line you see there that's going to be well we're going to figure out what that is here in a minute and these three dots are the three vector points from my earlier test now one thing i didn't show you was the unloaded coil position yet that'd be right up about let's see i would be right up here somewhere and the loaded coil that would be on good material would be right about there. So now, how does this apply to the real world today in 2025? Well, I'm going to show you. The T-Rex of the Eddy current world, vector point, at that time they didn't have the ability to store the impedance path on the screen, right? So nowadays, when we look at signals, if somebody takes a graphic of an eddy current signal and shows it to you, they're not showing you an impedance point. They're showing you the path that the impedance point took as it traveled up to, over, and past the indication, then back to null, right? So you're seeing dozens, if not hundreds, of vector points all connect together, kind of like an Etch-a-Sketch, right? So here, I'm touching my probe down to my aluminum block here, right? See, that's pretty, I do that pretty close. See that? Right there. Let's do that again. We're going to touch it down there. Probably have to hit null again. Oop, see that one? Look where that dot is. See the dot? It's kind of hard to see you there, but that'd be our top dot. And we go back to the operating point, hit null. Take another measurement. Oop, there's a second dot. Then I'll clear it, erase. And we'll go past the smallest indication after I null. Oop, that's the third dot. See, so if you look at my vector points, all it really is is the tip, the tip of each one of these 
impedance vectors. There's three of them in there. Now, I think you all probably figured out by now that the impedance plane on your instrument is just, just turned like that. So let's see what this looks like when we change our angle. No. Ready? Boom. Oh, gotta get off screen a little bit. I got a 45 degree angle probe here, so it's hard to keep everything on the screen. All right. So remember I said we started with that. Well, we've got something like this. And if you look at the three dots, it lines right up with those impedance vectors. So next time you look at a vector diagram or an impedance graph, just try to think of it in terms of rotating your test instrument like that to the left, counterclockwise, about what, 80 degrees? All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.